you again uh, for inviting me for this user group. This is one of the topic which is right now in a limelight and thanks everybody joining online uh, for this session. So let me start with a little bit. I'll, I'll have more of demo, less of uh, slides and all. So little bit about myself. Uh, I'm senior director for Stridely Solution. They have a power, power platform practice, also founder of Inside to Action, which is Canadian company. Other is US. Uh, like uh, what you have Calgary user group, we have Toronto user group uh, that I run. I'm a leader for that. And we have around 2,200 members now. Uh, also, I do a lot of training on power platforms, abilities, Power BI, Power App, <coughs> any power platform area. And uh, I love to share my knowledge. So this is one of the events that I'm presenting, but I go all over the world and present on Power BI initially, but now on Power App as well. So that's about myself. Also, this is the link. So in case somebody who is attending is in Toronto and they want to join event, we will be starting in-person event also soon. So link. Uh, some other platform that I lead is uh, uh, DAC, uh, which is run by Dynamic Community. Little bit about upcoming events, uh, like if you are in Power BI, overall power platform so if you want to attend and fill me in if if i'm missing i have only two of them but i would like to compile that information and share with my user group and everybody so uh, just in a chat window if i don't know any event plus please put the link one is global power platform bootcamp which uh, we organize every year actually the person is who initiated this uh, is from Calgary. Uh, his name is Kunal Tripathi. And it is held globally. Last year we had 70 locations and around 5,000 plus uh, participants. So it's a great event. This last two years we had online. This year we will have in person. So you will have one in Calgary as well. And in Canada we'll have three locations, uh, Ottawa, Toronto and Calgary. Uh, another one is uh, if you are in Toronto, this is in-person event happening this week. So it is all about uh, Power Platform, mainly focused on Power BI. So agenda, very simple overview. I'm just going to start with uh, some uh, details about uh, Data Mart, but we will be going end-to-end -end demos. And what's new and upcoming, what is expected, that uh, we'll be seeing in a slide. Why Power BI? So the number itself tells that in last seven years, we had a very rapid growth. Initially two years, it was beginning, but after that it was uh, almost exponential growth. Also, if you see the Gardner uh, report this time, they have rated Microsoft as a leader, which is in the top right corner. If you want to know more about uh, uh, this data mart, you, I have a link below. Uh, there is a data mart session on, on a build website. I have link as well, and it starts at 22 minutes. So let's dig deeper now, very quickly. Why Power BI? Like it starts with, uh, it is self-service tool, as well as it has a full capability of uh, development. Sorry, uh, yeah, Vivek, to interrupt, but are you sharing your screen? Oh, I'm not. I was. I don't see it. I don't see it. Okay, I am really sorry. No, all good. It's... Sorry, I didn't catch that earlier. No, that's okay. I will just go through. Can you see my screen now? I can see it now, yeah. Okay, so I'll just very quickly, I'll go through it. So, so I will not uh, talk about it because I already did, but this is about my bio, uh, our user group in Toronto, which I was talking about. Uh, there is a dynamic community DAC uh, uh, website where we have user group as well. 
and some of the upcoming event are uh, Power Platform Bootcamp. I have a link below, so if you are interested, it is happening in Calgary as well. Uh, dates are March 3rd and 4th. And if you are in Power, uh, Calgary and you want to help run this event, we are looking for some of the leaders who can help us because this time it is going to be in-person event. So uh, you can contact Kunal uh, Tripathi and there is a volunteer uh, call for volunteer uh, link also. And the second one is happening this week. If you are in Toronto, this is in-person event. I will skip through it because I was talking about and going to the next page. We talked about growth. We talked about Gardner Quadrant. And a build session which starts at 22 minutes. So uh, you are able to see my sc uh, screen, right? I just want to double check it. Yes. Yeah. OK, so our BI uh, gives you full capability of self-service, a hybrid model like developer who are pro developer. They can uh, customize, they can use Power BI for advanced uh, uh, scenarios as well. And at the same time, it gives a self-service scenario for somebody who is analyst and business analyst who are trying to look for insight from their data. So it empowers everybody, every team, and also entire organization. Uh, with the introduction of uh, Data Mart, the capability has increased exponentially. It gives you uh, full flexibility of creating semantic model without writing any code. So in the past, there was need for IT uh, person to create a data for you, data set that the, you can do reporting on. Now with the introduction of Data Mart, Power BI has taken care of every uh, requirement that is there to create your semantic model, even data modeling, even the uh, governance part of it, everything is packaged into one area and you don't have to write any code. And we'll be talking about that uh, in detail in the following screens. So let us start with data mart, the component. It is, uh, it is a in data ingestion, so ETL process as well. It creates a Azure SQL in a background when you are uh, creating a data set and it is storing over there. So creating semantic model also is just using UI. It is created and it is optimized for the performance as well by uh, Power BI. Let us start with ingestion. Uh, this is something which the first process you start with but in ingestion, we have to little bit understand about what is the difference because we had data flow from last three years and now data mark. Uh, there, there was a confusion that what is the need for two. Uh, with the data flow, you have ETL process only. It doesn't create a data semantic model. It doesn't create the data set to consume for different areas. So you can say that data mart is combination of your data flow, which is ETL part, data warehousing and data set capability. Uh, so main difference is this, I don't want to go in detail. I just wanted to, because you might have heard about data flow more than data mart, that, that is why. So in ingestion part of it, when we do demo, we are just going to focus on four components, which is connect, uh, then load and transform data flow and create new queries. So we will be uh, doing uh, that ingest uh, data preparation. I, I think it is a good idea to do demo in parallel. So I'm going to go a few slide more. Uh, with the Power BI desktop, you have so many different connectors that you can connect. With the data mart as well, you have a similar process and more 
connectors are added every day. So when Data Mart came into picture, there were not too many data sources. Even here, what you are seeing all category, it has already increased. This is one month old uh, screenshot, but it has already increased. So more and more data sources are uh, uh, added every month with the update. So the process for that uh, we will be uh, right now, what you are seeing is a screen capture of uh, Power BI desktop, but similar process will be there. We'll, we'll be able to create a query using UI as well as writing SQL statement. So you have, if you are pro developer, you are very good with SQL, you can write your own query and uh, uh, create a complex uh, model. Or somebody who is a analyst, uh, I don't know SQL. What do I do? So you have UI, UI part of it, which is visual uh, interface where you can write a query, and Power BI will write a SQL statement uh, by just clicking on UI. So we'll be looking at that demo as well. So this is about SQL statement you can write, and let us go back one and start with the demo. So first and foremost criteria for this data mart is you need to have a premium per user capacity or premium capacity. This option is not available if you are only if you have only pro. So uh, definitely you can buy if you are playing around if you want to play around. You can always go for a 60 day trial, I believe, which is uh, uh, per user. Uh, license, which I have it right now, Power BI premium per user content. Uh, I have full year subscription, but you can get a trial subscription as well. So if you want to try. Now, in terms of data mart, mainly we will be focusing on data hub, where all your uh, see here when you go to data hub and there is a filter here. And if you filter on data mart content, you will see what whatever you uh, created in data mart. So all the data set which is available will be available here. Uh, other thing we'll be going is a deployment pipeline. So it has a fully uh, functional. You can create a pipeline with uh, all uh, so that you are in sync with your data set when we and make sure the code and everything are pushed to the production as you created in it. Other thing we'll be focusing on is a workspace. So just by creating workspace, uh, you don't get this option, data mart option. After creating workspace, you will have to assign the premium capacity. So if I am in here, I have to go to setting and in advance. So in this case, it is here premium, you have to assign it. If I take away, if I go to Pro, you won't be able to access Data Mart feature. So when you create a workspace, go to Premium and first assign the capacity, Premium per user. If you have Premium capacity, you can select the other one. So that is limitation. You need to have Premium capacity assigned. Uh, next. Next is a uh, how do you create a data flow? So we are going to start with, I already created one, but I'm going to create a new one. So when I go here, if premium capacity is there, you have a build business focused data match. So that is where you start. I, I want to bring data, either it is from SQL, whether it is from Access, whether it is from Excel, you want to bring all data and do data modeling and then consume that in your Power BI report and also set up auto refresh, role level security, everything within Power BI services, you are able to do that. So let us start with the data mark preview. And now you will see the familiar interface that uh, you normally are seeing. And my connection. It's good. Should take. OK, so you will see a familiar interface here where uh, it is in Power Query Online. 
uh, first thing foremost, we are going to connect to data. So in this case, I'm just going to get data and maybe Excel for now. And you have two options. Either you can link directly to the file so that uh, your OneDrive link is always maintained. If data changes, then you are able to uh, update automatically. You also have a, a option to upload the file. So in this case, I'm just going to say I want to upload it because it is faster. So I'm just going to select this. And then it will, after it loads, it will take you to the next step. And it will ask me, what do you want to select? So I'm just going to select two of them. And then now uh, it is like Power BI desktop. Now you prepare, now I'm transferring data. I'm not going to do any transfer, uh, like a transforming data for now, because I already have another demo which is prepared. But I want to show you similar experience. It will start uh, loading. It will guide you step by step what activities it is doing. And once it is ready, you have two tables here. Now, you can rename here if they, they, by default it will create data mark two or three, but uh, by, you can rename your data set here as well. Uh, what other things I can do is uh, maybe uh, let us start uh, creating a query, so I'm just going to get a few more data set. It is Excel workbook, browse, country, next, and maybe population by country, and yeah, this is good. So add that and I'm just going to load as it is. Any questions so far uh, while this is loading? I don't see any questions in the chat right now. If anybody wants to come off of mute or put up your hand, feel free. So when when you import this data set, it is automatically creating a data flow behind the screen for you. So ETL process what you are doing using data flow. It is already performing for you. Now, now that I have a data, what next I can do? So let us start by creating a new query. So I will first try it with the SQL. So uh, I, I can say here, uh, I can just write select up. And from what data we have written. Let me just.
So if I'm a pro developer, I can just uh, write my SQL statement as well. So if I want to filter the data at the same time, then you can run it here uh, and view your data set. You can export it to Excel also. So now you are creating and you can save this query. You can consume that in data. Uh, other things what I'm going to do is create a new visual query. So if I'm not a pro developer, uh, then I can use a visual way also. So when you create a new query using visual query, uh, you can simply drag and drop that table. So you have those data set here, and then I, I want this data set to be created. Now say I want to merge both data and see data here. I can do right click and there is a new interface that will be coming soon, which is a much more better experience. Say I want to merge those data set with what tables I want to merge it with population. I can create a joint now and I can say OK. Now I have. The merge queries there and if you see here, I use a population by country and merged it with different data set. Now, same way how you are doing in Power BI, you can remove a few of the say date is not good. Now I created, I expanded. So you have a complete visual way you are creating a, a merge query and that is uh, that you can consume in uh, data mart. So this is created, you are creating a new query within Power BI. Now, other good thing about this is, so I'm going to first save it. And go back to our premium workspace. And if you see here, Data Mart is created for me. Now, if you want to further go and modify, you can go back, create more queries and everything. You can uh, do that as well. So that is about uh, get uh, ingest and in preparation side of it. Uh, also, there are a few options once you create uh, your data mark. So if I go to the more options, you can consume this directly in Excel as well. So you don't need to create a connection string and everything which is to Azure SQL. It creates, it is already there. You can directly start consuming that in Power BI as well. You can obviously delete, create a report. Uh, permission full management is there. You can create a refresh, schedule refresh also from settings. So if I go to settings, there are more options available. Uh, that you can uh, uh, modify. One of them which is not available here is your sensitivity label because this data set is directly from Excel. I loaded, uh, I didn't connect directly, so that is not available, but uh, you do. You can also set a sensitivity uh, uh, label so that uh, you can make sure that uh, proper governance is there on your side. That is all about the preparation side. Uh, if I miss anything, I'll come back again. Uh, Vivek, we did have one question. I'm not too sure if you saw it in the chat, but uh, does the query editor have the IntelliSense capability as if you were using SFMS for Azure Data Studio? Yes, it does. Has. Also, you can directly connect. So let me go then and show it to you. So if I go to settings, and your server setting, you can directly connect to your SSMS and then continue modification. So all those queries and everything will open in SSMS. And then you can further modify your model using SSMS. Also, you have SQL endpoints, you connect and uh, do full uh, development capabilities available there as well. So it is, this is, you can copy this connecting string and open in SSMS. Does that answer your question? Looks like we got a thanks in the chat from Armando. Yeah, thanks. 
So going back to uh, premium capacity, let's see what is next in our. Okay, so let us go to the next step, which is on uh, business uh, data mart side, uh, or business semantic model. So you have a data that is available now. You could you created a query. Uh, what else are possible on business semantic model side? Uh, it it is like I have listed only few, but uh, you can write uh, measures within Power BI services and consume in your Power BI report. Uh, you can write a complex DAX as well. Uh, there are few limitations, but uh, very, uh, very few limitations. You can hide table, which is which you are able to do in Power BI desktop also, and you can set up uh, incremental load that is for large model consumption. Uh, so let us go and de demo on that. So sim I'm just going to do simple one here. So now I, again, I open my model. Uh, I can create a new measure. Same way how we are doing in Power BI. I don't know why I am not getting it. Sorry about that. I would just see that confirms a song. Uh, Confirmed, and the new measure will be created. Now there is some odd thing happening here, which I don't understand why, but a month ago it was working. When I create this measure, I am not able to see in my uh, model here, but when I go to data mod model and start creating report, I see that measure. So this is something which I already reported. I don't know why it is not working. I used to see before I created that measure. I cannot see here. Uh, so next one is uh, hide tables and all that is simple. Just from here, if you want, want to hide in the port view, you can do that. Uh, incremental load. So whatever table you want to do incremental load, you can select that. And you can set up from table to incremental load. So this is again uh, the same uh, thing what we are doing normally in Power BI services uh, or Power BI desktop. You have to select the date field. Now it is giving me error because I don't have any date field, but uh, this is just to let you know that if you have a date field, you can put it here. You can set your storage period. So How many years worth of data you want to keep? What is the refresh period? So last how many days you want to refresh? Also, you have a couple of other options. Do you want to uh, refresh only the completed days? So if uh, today's date is there and we, I'm refreshing in afternoon, I don't want to refresh. I only want to refresh when it is completed. So those type of scenarios. 
we will move on to next one, which is a semantic model side we already covered. So I want to move it to the next one is more on uh, security uh, manage. How do you manage? You create a data mart, but what options you have in managing, making sure that uh, a business user who needs to get access get and it doesn't have a data leakage or uh, so some sensitive information doesn't go out. So you have a, uh, many options available, but we are just going to discuss about role level security. So uh, adding that to your data mod. Sensitivity label, I already explained when I drop down. I don't have that in my option, but if you are connecting to SQL and all, you should have that option because you need to uh, set up. This is the imported, but uh, uh, in your case, it should be uh, available. And complete life cycle management. So uh, uh, managing the deployment pipeline also, those options are available. So Power BI has made it very uh, easy for you to manage your data and govern your data without putting a lot of efforts. So I'm going to open my data mark and let us start with uh, your role level security. So very easily, let me go to the my prepared one. It is a little bit better because I did some transformation and all. It is same data. I just put GDP, that was long name and all. But say I want to assign a role. Uh, I'm not going to cover how to assign and all, but uh, because everybody knows this is uh, very uh, easily available from long time role level security is there. But say I want to apply on uh, sales data role level security. I can, or maybe I have Canada and Corona data I want to filter down. Then what I can do is I can create a new role. So create new role, put a filter. So it is on GDP where the country equals to Canada. And then when I want to assign after creating, I can assign, select that role and simply type an email to assign that role to a particular person. And also you have an option to view as, so I want to see what the user will be seeing. So I have that option here, I'm seeing only Canada data. This is on row level security side, sensitivity label, as I told you, it is in setting area. You can, if you want to set up sensitivity label, you can do that as well. I want to spend a little bit more time on deployment pipeline side. So in this allows you to maintain your entire uh, data mart deployment pipeline from one place without doing much of effort. And also the UI created for this is very easy to understand. So I can start with, I created data mart already. I want to create now pipeline so I can manage my data set. I can see that. UG and I can create a deployment pipeline. Now it will first ask you, it, it has created development test and production environment for you. First, it will ask you that choose the workspace that you are assigning. So I need to select that. Uh, because I created two data set, once I assign workspace, it will show me what are asset I have under that. So I have two data mart, I don't have any report and all, but in case I have created report, it will give you how many data marts you have. Maybe you just created a data flow in that then it will show. But in this case, we created data mart, which is already including data flow. So we don't need to worry about it. Uh, I don't have a data set here. I don't have a report because I did not deploy anything. So I can start with first deploy. What do you want to, you have one is Calgary uh, uh, Power Platform User Group demo, and one is data mart two. So Two of them you are deploying to test environment now. I also have a more options here, which will allow me, do I need to, oh, 
sorry i clicked it So which will allow me, do I want to include this or not? So I have that option also to include, and I'm going to keep this selected. And now it is loading it to test. After that, if I make some modification in test and before moving it, sorry, uh, in deployment area, and I want to move it to production, I can see the differences also. What is the difference between both of them? Do I really need to push it, or do I need to wait until everything is verified? Uh, I'm going to wait, and I'm going to move to presentation uh, in the meantime, so that it, it may take a little bit time. So we are talking uh, when deployment pipeline, we are talking about life cycle management. Now going to da data mart Power BI in enterprise reporting and embedding. Basically, uh, we will be doing this demo as well. Uh, so how to create report now this particular data mart session doesn't need to create a report uh, because Data Mart ends when report creation starts. So I'm just going to focus mainly on Data Mart. What is coming soon? Uh, like uh, in what are different enhancements that you may see in uh, Data Mart soon is more connectors. Definitely we talked about uh, the experience with creating query uh, will be better uh, as I told you when I was creating query and then I created measure I was not able to see even the UI for visual query creation is going to be a little bit easier. That's what uh, is there uh, right now. We are not able to rename the query. So when you saw I created a visual query, it created visual query one. I cannot rename that, so that will be coming soon. Uh, uh, We'll be able to create a many query tabs right now. It is just create under one. Uh, auto save. So when you create a query and exit, your query is not saved. So uh, yeah, auto save will be coming soon, or it may already be there. I was trying today and it didn't save. So soon, soon we'll be seeing that. Uh, opening this entire data. Uh, Mart experience in new browser tab so that you can work parallelly with the reporting and all will be there. Uh, major creation is very difficult, so the, there will be some announcement and reporting side, uh, the connection wise, it will be coming soon. Also, when you create a data mart, you are able to consume that model in Power BI desktop. So say for supply chain or uh, operation, somebody created a data mart. Now, if you want to give access to end users like self-service side to connect to that data source so that they don't have to create their own, they don't want, they don't have to bring it from different data source. They have single version of truth. Hey, Supply chain reporting, if you want to do it, do it from this. You have that option as well. I'm going to skip through next one. So there are some uh, learning. If you want to learn about more about data, Mart, then I have some links over there. Last but not the least, which we will be. OK, uh, so let us see now my deployment uh, is done in test. If you see here, I'm going to compare it. So I am able to compare both of them here that it shows I have two equal to two. So both of them are is already there. But if I do, uh, if I publish it again, it may give you something which will say, hey, I'm not able to here left hand side. I have two data uh, mark, and right hand side. I only have one. So do you want to push it there or not? And next step is uh, deploy to production. Now, one thing I want to tell you that once you create this, if you make any changes in the test, you don't have to push it to the production until you are 100% sure. So it is 
uh, if you are created using test and then uh, you can uh, test uh, in the test environment first uh, your report you can check it switch it between production to test and make sure that your visual doesn't break and all if everything is okay you just push it to the production so i have 17 seconds left for my presentation so i would like to take opportunity to show my last slide which is thank you so much I'm open for questions uh, if uh, any of the user have it, but uh, I would say that uh, it it has changed a lot of. OK, that is telling me that I need to stop presentation. So that's all from my side. Thank you again for this opportunity and I am open for any question. You can unmute yourself. I believe so. And uh, if you have any question, I can answer. Thank you so much, Vivek. We do have one question in the chat here from Julia, or actually two. Uh, the first, is it possible to use uh, Azure DevOps to set up Power BI Data Barn uh, deployment pipeline? Uh, there was a discussion, and uh, I actually have not tried that. So uh, I I will find out and I can give answer, but I have not used uh, Azure DevOps. Uh, because it is giving me a lot of capability here, which right now I'm experimenting also. Yeah. I actually got a per uh, this license per premium per user license two days back, and I set up this demo. So I'm going to do a lot of experiment. I have not done anything yet for that. Awesome. Okay. Uh, the next question from Julia is, um, how are changes managed slash synchronized in multi-developer environments? So here you have seen that uh, from de development test to production, basically it is pushing it. If you have made some development work, and then if you want to push those changes, it is just uh, uh, push it to the test and then pushing it to production is that easy. So you don't have to, if you have a report which is created off the production, until you're not 100% sure, you don't have to push it to the test and production. I can make changes in my data mart in here. And once I'm happy, say I've created new queries, I've created, I have report also, so everything moves. So if you make any changes to report, you just need to push it and then see whether the report is working fine, all visuals are fine or not, and then only push it to the production. So making sure that your report doesn't break, your user doesn't have any uh, issue with uh, accessing those reports and all. She just asked a follow-up question here. What about rollback changes? So you have a versioning as well, so you can roll back changes as well. I'm not able to click because it is right now doing it, but okay. And so now here I made a change. Say here it is showing green. Here I made a change. If you see, show more, show more, and show more. This is perfectly sync right now. Here I uncheck one of this before. So if I do that, then when you're comparing, it will show that no, you need to push it back here. This is synchronized, but this is not. And roll back. So I created date and time. When I created this, it is over here. If I want to roll back, yes, do I, I have option? Yes.